it changed again in 2001, 9-11, when we, when we realized that this uh, dream of the world without conflict and the dream of the world of, uh, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of um, globalization and common culture has ended, because we entered the, the new period of the 21st century, which was the, uh, 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 the war on terror. And it, and it changed for the third time in 2008. When we start, when the first classical geopolitical war started in our region, uh, in Georgia, uh, uh, because that was the uh, uh, the classical uh, um, uh, proxy war of the geopolitics. So, if we are supposed to talk about the challenges of, of the uh, of the Central and Eastern Europe uh, in a in a global uh, scale, on a global uh, global perspective, I would say that the presence of the geopolitics uh, in this region is is the is the most significant. Uh, uh, global challenge uh, of the Central and Eastern Europe. Why? Because, as we all know, geopolitics is all about borders. Uh, it's, all, it's all about defining uh, uh, the, the unities, uh, uh, the political unities by borders. And the geopolitical borders defines the international relations in our region. And if you uh, follow the discussion of, uh, of the leaders of this region, uh, you can very uh, uh, frequently hear the word border. Where is the border? What are, where are the borders in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, between the West and the rest, uh, between the Central Europe, the Eastern Europe, the Western Europe, between the uh, safe zone and unsafe zone, be between the pivot area and the, uh, uh, and the peripheries? This is, this, the debates here in, in this part of, of the world is uh, uh, nowadays very much uh, over the, uh, the, the, uh, the question of, of, uh, of defining borders and, uh, and defining yourself vis-a-vis -vis borders. And, it's, uh, and of course also because uh, uh, in this region, this classical uh, uh, political border has also been challenged or, uh, or violated uh, uh, by the aggression. And this, is, this is the region when the borders uh, are, are constantly being, still even today, changed by aggression. The, we are moved, the, uh, the borders in this region are moved by aggression. Uh, it, uh, uh, the, the, the borders of, uh, in this region is defined by the frozen conflicts. When you look, at, look around this region, you got the Transnistria, you got Abkhazia and Ossetia, you got the uh, now occupation of Crimea and, uh, and the war in the eastern Ukraine. It's, uh, uh, the Polish-Ukrainian border is the last safe border towards east. Uh, the next one is already uh, 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 the war border between Ukraine and Russia, between, between Russia and Georgia, uh, 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 in the frozen conflict of, of the Transnistria and, uh, and the others. So you see the, uh, uh, the geopolitics, as I said, uh, 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 entered, re-entered this, uh, this region in 2008, and that's put all our attention to the question of borders. And in that context, uh, uh, the general goal of... Uh, uh, of a politics in this, uh, in this part of the world, for, as, 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 as I say it, is to, is to secure the geopolitical orientation of the Central Eastern Europe. This is the ultimate goal of, of our politics, is to secure the geopolitical orientation towards west of, of, this, uh, uh, of, of, the, of this region. Because when, it's, when we talk about the borders, it's, uh, uh, we just want this region all together uh, uh, to be part of uh, uh, what, what we, uh, uh, what we uh, define as the, as the community of the, of the free nations, community of transatlantic community, uh, or, tr or as we say it in Poland, Euro-Atlantic community of, uh, of the free nations. So we want to secure the, uh, this uh, uh, geopolitical orientation of the Central and Eastern Europe towards the community of, of Euro-Atlantic uh, community of the free nations. Uh, but not only to secure it, but on also not to lose anybody on the way to secure this orientation. So Central Eastern Europe uh, 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 should and has to enter the, uh, uh, the community, Euro-Atlantic community, altogether as a united, as a one group of, uh, as a one community of, of the nations and states. Because if we lose someone on the, on the way, uh, that will be already the... Uh, 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 the, uh, our mistake. So we have to not only secure the, uh, the orientation, but we also secure the community, the, the, the unity of the, uh, of the countries that, has, uh, that the society of, of which decided about the orientation of their own countries. 
because we're not talking about the elites, we're talking about the society's choice. And you know that uh, uh, in some of the countries, like Georgia, like Ukraine, uh, people paid the, uh, the highest price for their choice, the highest price for the, ge for the, for, for, for the uh, choice of, uh, of the geopolitical orientation. They paid the, the price of their life. So, uh, so we have this moral obligation uh, also towards those, uh, uh, those societies of, uh, of the region to secure the orientation and secure them uh, all together as a unity. And we're not talking about the, uh, just the politics. Uh, uh, since these few days here in, in Warsaw, we're all debating of, about the world, the, the word uh, 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 that, as uh, I understand, was uh, somehow forgotten or even crossed out in the American debate for the last couple of years, which is the, the, the word civilization. Uh, 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 as I, when I talk to, uh, to, to the commenters, uh, uh, commentators from the, from the United States about the Trump speech in Warsaw, uh, uh, I, say what was the, the, I, I ask them what was the most shocking for them. Uh, they, uh, the, some of them at least said that the most shocking uh, was the fact that the President of the United States used the word civilization as, as the word defining the, uh, uh, the, Western, the Western community. Because uh, uh, civilization was, uh, uh, for many last years, was uh, uh, seen as, the, as a divisive word. Uh, uh, but, the, but the Trump used the word civilization to define this community of free nations and, and, uh, and states. And if that's the, uh, uh, the stake of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, geopolitics, if that is the stake of, of the global challenge, then we're talking about something more, much deeper than just the uh, um, that's just the question of the diplomacy. We're talking about the general uh, division uh, of, the, uh, of the cultural, civilizational I entities uh, uh, in the world. And if this is this on stake, that, at stake, that means uh, it's even more important to secure the geopolitical or civilizational orientation of the Central and Eastern Europe. So we are really talking about the, the moment in the, in, in the history and the moment of uh, of, uh, of the international politics here in Central and Eastern Europe that can have a, a, a really long-term uh, significance and long-term consequences of the, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, in the fate of the region. And from seeing that from that perspective, uh, uh, there's a, uh, one big question mark, of course. Do you really have any instruments to pursue these goals? Do you really uh, are uh, capable of securing the geopolitical orientation of the Central and Eastern Europe and to secure it as a, 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 a unity of, and a community of the free nations and free states. Uh, uh, do we, as the West, as it is now defined, uh, as the, the, the Euro-Atlantic community is, uh, as it is now, do we have the, the instruments to, to, to do so? And this is my question mark put also to you as the experts and specialists, because I doubt it. I think the instruments we are, uh, we are having now, like the very vague uh, Easter partnership of the European Union, uh, uh, quite protectionist uh, 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 views towards the opening the, uh, the markets towards the, uh, the, uh, the countries like Ukraine and uh, all those who have got free trade agreements with the European Union. Very, uh, I would say, uh, 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 bluntly speaking, non-enthusiastic uh, uh, debates over the enlargement of, uh, at, if the enlargement is any, uh, put on the, on the table at, at, at some occasions in the, in, the, in the European Union debates. Is that the, the instruments of, of the geopolitical pressure? Is it an instrument of geopolitical weight uh, uh, that we can exercise uh, uh, as a European Union towards the East? I really doubt this is the job, this is the uh, 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 the nature of the instruments uh, uh, in that context we have to, uh, we should uh, 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 use. And the same with the NATO. NATO is more uh, 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 real uh, and in the sense that we got the real partnership, we got the real uh, exercise. We in, in Poland and Lithuania, we got the common brigade with, with Ukraine, the first of, the, of such, a, such a kind that we got the uh, so, so, so our soldiers exercising together with Lithuanians and Ukrainians, and at least we're breaking these, these borders uh, of, um, of, of NATO with this brigade. But still, this is just uh, uh, just uh, 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 instruments of uh, 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 transitional instruments, so to say. These are not dis uh, decisive instruments. 
And we all know that the NATO was all about to make the, the, uh, uh, the serious pledge towards the Georgia and Ukraine in the very 2008 in the uh, Bucharest uh, summit. And, uh, and we stepped back that, uh, uh, they, they did step back that time. And the consequences we are following now. So, uh, so I don't believe, uh, uh, but this is, as I said, this is, I can open that for debate. Uh, I don't think we got the instruments uh, uh, that are uh, according uh, uh, to, the, to the situation we're witnessing. That this is the, the goals are, 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 are all the, you know, the, the visions, uh, our uh, dreams are, are high, but our instruments are very limited in, the, in, that, in that context. And uh, so what we can do uh, uh, to, uh, to change that situation, at least what, uh, what we believe and what is also the um, the, the part of the international diplomatic uh, activities of my president, President of Poland, Andrzej Duda, uh, uh, is to uh, uh, building up uh, the subjectivity of our region. It's to building up the, the political visibility and diplomatic capabilities of, of, the, of our region. Uh, uh, not as a confrontation, but as a, uh, uh, as a capacity building effort. And this is the, uh, uh, why the Three Cs Summit uh, uh, we organized uh, passed so well because uh, uh, we, we we're talking about the uh, the subjectivity, uh, uh, the visibility of the region through the practical instruments of economic cooperation, just to make our region stronger, just to make our region more region more cohesive, just to uh, just to make our region, uh, 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 I would say, too big to fail. Uh, uh, and this is one of the ways uh, 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 we, may, we may enter uh, to this uh, global challenge through the back door, I would say. Not to be confrontational in the geopolitical sense, but to enter uh, 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 by building up our own capacities. And in that context, I just uh, uh, recall the, uh, uh, what President Duda was uh, saying, addressing the uh, diplomatic conference, or, or the ambassador's conference in Kiev. Uh, the President Duda was... Uh, 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 last year, the uh, the keynote speaker of the of the of the ambassador's conference in Kiev, and uh, and what he said uh, was we believe very important, but also Ukraine and the other countries of of this part of uh, of our common Central Eastern European uh, uh, region should invest more in a regional cooperation, should invest more in the links with the region of the Central Eastern Europe, because this is the only region for which the relations with Ukraine is not the function of relations to Russia. For everybody else, the relations with Ukraine, the relations with Georgia, the relations with uh, whatever country, is always the function of their relations uh, with Russia. And when they get, uh, and, uh, and they will be al always secondary. Only for this region, the relation with Georgia, Ukraine, uh, Moldova and uh, Belarus, and uh, you can name all the countries, are the primary relations, because this is the, our natural political environment. So, uh, and we believe this is not being yet exercised to the extent it should be exercised. Uh, uh, that the uh, enjoyment of the, of the interest of, uh, uh, of the greater powers to, to, the, uh, to, to, to the region of Central Europe somehow uh, uh, limits their interest into uh, in building up uh, relations with, with, within the region. Uh, and this is uh, what we think wrong. Uh, 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 the Ukraine and the other countries should invest much more in building up the good relations with the, within the region for which, it, the, uh, 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 as I said, the relation to, towards is, is the primary relations, not the secondary one. So uh, this was just a few, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, I hope uh, provoking enough thoughts, uh, 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 food for thought, for, so, so you can uh, discuss and debate over that. I believe so. As I said, uh, this is uh, uh, the geopolitical game we are playing here in, in Central and Eastern Europe. The geopolitics, uh, uh, since today's, we understand it also in this civilizational perspective. So this is uh, uh, how, how important this region for the world politics is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Szerski. Uh, this morning, we're very fortunate to have uh, former Ambassador Matthew Brizza, uh, who did something that most uh, diplomats 
are probably afraid to do, to leave the Foreign Service and go out on their own and uh, to do something that is perhaps even of more interest than staying inside uh, Washington's foggy bottom. Um, today, um, Ambassador Brizza will talk to us about NATO's East uh, and the United States from the perspective of somebody who lives in the region uh, and looks at the world probably sideways, which is a very good thing. So please make your remarks. Uh, thank you, Professor Mischko, for those kind words, for getting me here. Uh, Dr. Malitsky, thank you for all your friendship throughout these years, including your lovely, wonderful daughter who uh, guided me through my family's ethnic homeland, Lviv, Lviv, sorry if I just violated any Ukrainian sensibilities, and hosted me for a wonderful uh, program about a year and a half ago. Uh, and Rector Dushchik, thank you for letting me be here as well. This is a very powerful place for me to be. I'm uh, totally Polish by background, 100%, and uh, my... Uh, I was looking out in front of my hotel today at the uh, monument to the victims of Soviet repression and the deportations, and uh, very powerful. I, I went and looked at all the towns on there that uh, you know, victims came from, and I saw my grandmother's region, Sambor, when she was only from a small village, but uh, you know, it made me think that uh, had she, like, like so many uh, other Poles, not taking a, a, a very difficult decision at that time. I, I probably wouldn't exist. It wouldn't be here speaking before you. Uh, and uh, the changes that this country has gone through would have never happened. There's, uh, fundamentally, my talk, I think, is going to end up being optimistic, but it's going to start pessimistic because the title is, uh, uh, yeah, U.S. relations with NATO's East under Trump shaking the foundation. But before that, I just want to build on, on some of the things that were said already and, and thank all the excellencies who are here, the ambassadors, the, the other members of the diplomatic community, the academic community, Ambassador Leighton as well. I'm not sure where you are, but uh, uh, Professor was referring to my uh, new life outside of diplomacy. And I have a joint venture with a Finnish company, a great Finnish company, Lamour, based in Porvo. I'm on their board globally. Uh, fantastic environmental technologies company uh, and it's really fun to be uh, involved in an uh, entrepreneurial endeavor even if it's scary because well all my meager savings are on the line and I have to succeed so it's very nice to be back then and have a chance to think uh, and stretch my mind uh, be here with you in a place that my grandparents probably never would have been let in. They, there's no chance they could have passed through the front gate. So it's a very powerful moment for me. Thank you. And also to be an opening speaker together with uh, Secretary of State Szczerski and with my favorite boss of all time, Ambassador Daniel Fried, uh, closing the conference. Um, Dan taught me so much about this part of the world, which I'll, I'll get to in a moment. Uh, enabled me and enabled my, my dear friend Kurt Volker, who is now the new special representative for Ukraine, uh, to make it, to move through the State Department system when there were all sorts of bureaucratic obstacles. And we were, if you go back and Google us, you'll see we were attacked by the Washington Post uh, when we were brought to the State Department from the White House in 2005. We were, there, there, there's a position in the State Department called DAS, D-A-S, Deputy Assistant Secretary. That's kind of the first level where things get serious and you know where you actually can have an impact on policy so we were called the baby dasses because we were brought over at a, a kind of a younger age than normal uh thanks to secretary rice and ambassador freed and uh, dan suffered because of that in, inside the bureaucracy a lot of people disliked him because he enabled ambassador volker and me and then another uh uh, ambassador Mark Pekala, Pękawa, Polish guy as well, who became ambassador to Latvia. Anders is out here somewhere. Spruits. Uh, and I remember uh, Mark at the time was 50, and he said, boy, only in the State Department and in Washington could a 50-year-old guy be criticized for being a baby. So it's great to be outside of Washington. It really is. I live in Istanbul now, by the way. Um, so my, my speech, it will build on much of the powerful insights of, of Professor and Secretary of State Szczerski. And I'm, I'm so... Um, tempted just to react and, and embrace what you said. I mean, you really reminded me of uh, sort of the context for many of the things I want to say. Uh, so what I'm, what I'm going to talk about, I guess, well, you should know a little bit more about my background. I, I, I am much closer to the Republican side of Washington than the Democratic side. I, I'm not a member of any party. 
I was, yes, nominated by President Obama to go to uh, Azerbaijan, but I was always closer uh, to the Republicans and to President Bush and Secretary Rice. So I'm gonna, when I'm tough on President Trump in a moment, uh, you, you'll know it's not that it's some sort of a knee-jerk ideological response. Um, but it comes from um, uh, discomfort with what I fear on the president's part is a lack of what Professor Szczerski was just talking about, that geopolitics have returned to this region. And, and really, they should never have left. Um, but, and the president's chief advisors, whether it's Secretary Tillerson or National Security Advisor McMasters, or best of all, a Secretary of Defense Mattis, I think they understand this. Uh, but I think the president doesn't. I don't think he has a geopolitical vision. His speech here, I'll get into it in a little more detail, said the right things, but in a strange way in some cases. Uh, not as clearly, I, I would argue, as, as he should have said. And I think that's because he doesn't feel it. I feel, we all in this room feel it. We feel what Professor Szczerski was saying. We feel that geopolitics was here, that the world changed in 2008 when Russia invaded and occupied Georgia. We know it. I, I by the way, was in the middle of that and in the question and answer session. I'm happy to talk a lot about that. But I don't think President Trump feels it. Um, so that's starting to get pessimistic. But let's, let's think about the positive just a little bit longer. Uh, if you look at where Poland was, obviously, in 1989, uh, it's in a miraculous place now. It's, it's, yes, you walk around the city, and it's got so many gleaming skyscrapers now, restaurants from all over the world. For goodness sakes, it's poles walking down the street are indistinguishable in appearance from, from any other European nation. Poland has really returned to Europe. Thank God, in geopolitically, economically, culturally, socially, of course Poland is the heart of 